<laughs> hey Patrick, this is awesome. Man. <laughs> this is We're amazing. going to Mars. Yeah. Mars! <laughs> Mars attacks! In case you couldn't hear with our masks on, it's Chris and Brian from Team Aquascape <laughs> all the way down here south of the equator in Australia and we're getting to see this incredible wreck pond that you see behind us. I've been so excited to come see this. Now we see it, let's go get wet. Let's do right? it. Let's do it. Ciao! You guys ready to do this? I'm ready to roll. <laughs> Give me that camera, Tony. Here you guys go. You can open it together since Brian's not here. I like the wrapping. Yeah, right. I Didn't wrapped it like myself. Koalas and stuff on there. Oh, look at this. <laughs> what do we have? A little nappy, so little nap time. Ooh. So I don't have to look at your ugly face mask. the whole room. <laughs> See if you know how to use this thing. Uh, you sleep no matter what. I, but I still sleep. got you one. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you look better in yours than I do in mine. <laughs> This is so weird. Like, I can't. Uh, like, uh, I feel like I should be going to like people's court. <laughs> Next stop, LA, then Australia. Bye, Amy. Bye. We'll Safe call travels. you 500 times on the road. I look forward to it. Not. There's our chauffeur, <laughs> our Aussie rules chauffeur. That's the Aussie chauffeur. <laughs> well, we are going for the first time to see probably the largest contractor built aquascape water feature anywhere in the world. Of course, we had to come down under to Australia. We had the artists of the year. So we are gonna have a lot of fun. We're a little bit jet lagged. So that water is gonna feel pretty darn well. And uh, what a cool place. This is Woodford. It's the largest folk festival uh, in the country, I guess. I think a lot of pot gets smoked in here. Wow, this is cool, look at that. Holy cow, that is cool. So this is our first time seeing this. We got our bathing suits on, we got our gear on, our cameras on, and we're uh, gonna go take a refreshing dip. It's really cool for me to see what our contractors are doing with our products, just amazing. Oh my God. <laughs> this is yeah. pretty wild. This is is pictures do not do this thing justice. No. Oh my God, look I at the wetland. It's been here for a year, look at the plants. Love the beaches. Oh, holy yeah. cow, look at that. Yeah. It's not even a year old, and look at how the plants look. This is incredible. Yeah, it's a real deal. Lake Gula at Woodford, um, the biggest project I've uh, ever un undertaken. Probably the largest one, or is the largest one, aquascape system in Australia. That size and I'd say recreational system in, in Australia, if not the Southern Hemisphere, naturally filtered. An absolute dream to actually get such a project like that. I've been waiting for that for a long time. And I've actually had Woodford in my mind for a long time and it just happened. The CEO got in touch and described what he wanted and they said that's exactly what we do and there was no other way to go about it but saying yes we can do it. And we could do it and we did do it. And it was a big challenge, it's an acre and a third, it's a massive system, massive amounts of rock, 2,000 tonne of boulder, another 2,000 tonne of pebble to put in by hand and each one is individually placed. We didn't have a lot of challenges in weather, it was dry, we did it through winter which is the best time to work in Australia, especially in North Queensland or in Queensland. We did have a timeline though because we had to get it done before the Woodford Folk Festival and we ended up having about six to eight weeks of running time before people actually got there and started getting into it. On this particular project we had to have people who knew what they were doing or had some kind of experience so from around Australia we had certified contractors, the CACs, all come in in different stages. There was up to three groups working there at a time and it moved pretty good. We timelined it really well and we were right on target by about a week and a half I think, pretty good for such a project. When we got it going and we turned it on and the response from the staff and the people at Woodford 
who run Woodford was incredible. They just gushing. They just couldn't get over it. You know, it was just amazing. They just couldn't believe that such a thing was possible. So that's that was a good thing. And I, and I think they had did have trepidation. They were like, is this going to work? We've put so much into this to bring to, to offer a place at the festival because it gets extremely hot and people need somewhere to cool off because it's oppressive. So this was a key thing for their festival to make it successful and go into the future. So they wanted it to work. They needed to know it worked. But then there was always the doubt that would it work? And especially with the amount of people that went into that, there was 25,000 people that used that uh, lake. And the response from the patrons, they were absolutely blown away that this thing had now been created. And only in a year, not even a year, they'd been to the festival last year, a lot of them, and suddenly this thing had appeared in their space. You know, some of them their favorite camping spaces, although they were very happy that it was still, that it was now a lake. And the kids playing and discovering fish and being able to cool off uh, was something which change the festival. Well, they were calling it a game changer. The lake was a game changer to the whole festival. So awesome. The main reason I wanted to come on this trip is to be inspired. How could you not with this? I mean, even the way our buddies are using the pond right now is inspirational. The sand beach, like just incredible. I mean, I'm just, I need to actually write it all down so I don't forget all this stuff, but it's just so cool. I think what I'm so impressed with is, you know, the collaboration of different Australian CACs that came together to put this together. And then the shape of it, like to pull off the shape and the coves and, and the inlets and the little, like swim intake areas and stuff and the depth of it. I mean it's like 17 feet deep over there the island look at the island I mean this pond would, would not be the same thing without the island it, it just draws you to it and everybody wants to swim out to it and once you get out there it's amazing to see all the little tiny fish swimming around it to go over the deep areas and then even over the deep areas they did really cool stuff and so it's not just like a big black hole you see these giant logs that have been buried down in there and you want to go all the way down to the bottom and discover the larger fish that are hanging down there. And the sand beach just pulls you in. You just want to keep walking and walking and walking. I've always been so nervous about wanting to do a sand beach and this gives me not only ideas but the confidence now to want to do it back home for our customers. And the waterfalls, just cool. And it's all been done for a reason. Like the waterfalls aren't just here for aesthetics, just like on a normal pond. We have a biofalls on one side, and a skimmer box on the other side to help with the circulation. All the pumps are way down at the other end, just pulling all that water over that way, keeping this thing spotless. I mean, it was so much fun to snorkel around, see the different fish, see all the <laughs> incredible rock work. What I'm trying to say, Tony, is look at the rock work above. It's mimicked all the way down 17 feet deeper. The other amazing thing about it is it's so big that there's no way you can see the entire thing in one day can you see this stone that's placed out with water all the way around it it's so important and he does it here he does it over here and they're like out of water destination boulders like we do a lot of destination boulders and destination boulders are the kind of rocks that invite you to walk up onto them but on a recreation pond you need destination boulders out in the middle of the water something you can actually swim to and get up on top the other thing you would never notice from this spot right here it's extremely shallow there but when i spin around it's extremely deep never hit bottom <laughs> so cool god i want to change my pod so pretty obvious, you don't want people coming in this area for one reason. All of these aquatic plants, this is our wetland filter. The water comes up through a series of rock and gravel and then through the roots of these different aquatic plants, keeping this thing crystal clear. This wetland filter goes from here all the way around to about where that far tree is over there. And this is the small one. There's a massive one, which I can't wait to show you later. It's what starts that big waterfall over there. So look at the size of these water lilies. This is something that would not happen back in Chicago. That lily pad right there is easily two foot by two foot. The size of the flowers are bigger than any cantaloupe I've ever seen. They're enormous water lilies. Now these are all tropical lilies. The reason we couldn't keep it in Chicago, tropical lilies are really easily defined by one, one thing, a couple things. 90% of the time, the water lily flower comes above the surface of the water. The other thing you're gonna pay attention to is the serrated edges. All tropical lilies have that kind of serrated edge with a little point on the end of it. But look at how gorgeous they look in here. What's nice too is the way Patrick and his team developed this pond. Not that these lilies are gonna take over the entire space because right past the edge of these lilies, see how they just stop? It goes down deep. 
and those lilies don't want to grow in deep, deep water. So I guarantee they designed this space to be a big lily habitat type area. So here we are at the end of the wetland filter. What I'm really, really paying attention to now is what a great job they did with the variety of plants. I mean, we've got all different types of sedges in here. I wish I could tell you what they all were, but obviously a totally different plant than this one here. And this one here, and I know this is a spiked rush. And then you got some irises out over here. Really, really cool. So these guys are out here just kind of sprucing some stuff up. There's a huge event coming this weekend, and they just want to make sure everything's tidied and nice looking. Normally, these things don't take any attention at all. This area here was super clever. This is a giant, uh, let's call it a 30 inch diameter log that goes all the way out. The reason it's not falling into the pond out there is because you put this boulder this boulder and this boulder back on top of it which allows the log to sit stay in horizontal but even more importantly an opportunity for people like me to walk out here check it out and jump in if you'd like i would say that's probably about nine feet deep because i just barely touched the bottom there really really cool and so that would be called a destination rock i'd call it a destination log nice job patrick so I'm clear over on the other side of the pond, another beach area, which drew me from that side all the way over to here. I think a really cool construction technique is the liner actually comes up behind this concrete curb. So the liner comes underneath this, back up here, that holds that liner in place, and then there's about this much sand so that sand doesn't erode all the way out into the bottom. So this is what we call an intake bay. And from here, you can understand why. Everything's been pushing, pushing, pushing. So pushing from that bog filter, pushing from the different jets, pushing from the waterfall over there and jets throughout the way and everything gets sucked into here. And if you look over here, you can really see the current pulling everything in. So notice how this pond has zero windblown debris sitting on the surface and it's because of the enormous amount of circulation pushing from everywhere and then pulling into one area so occasionally the same crew that we saw earlier comes over here with some nets the debris just kind of circles around and they can come in here and scoop that stuff out these big concrete boxes are where the pumps sit and you can see they've planted around them to slowly hide them again the thing's only been here for five months so in another three months, you won't even see those those boxes anymore. Check out these stepping stones. Who wouldn't want to hop across this area to get across? So much more fun than walking around the backside. And the placement of them is perfect. The other thing I noticed is the stepping stones are so big that I can comfortably do something like this without worrying about falling into the pond. So he's got some massive, massive stepping stones here, big enough to handle the enormous amount of people that'll come through this space. So if you look along this edge, you can see about three different jets all along this side. Really, really important again, just because of that circulation. We wanna make sure nothing stays stagnant. So everything from this side is pushing across the surface and then slowly gets pulled into here. So you can tell this pond has been planted for the future. This is probably the straightest edge of this entire feature. When I say planted for the future, all of these plants are gonna get pretty big. One of my favorite things is where you can't tell where the water ends and where the land begins. So when we see rushes like this at this height now, I know they're only a couple months old. These things will eventually be this high. They're not only gonna kind of travel up into this gravel area, they'll also travel back into there, which is not only gonna hide the entire edge, but make it an enormous habitat for more and more life. Fish and crustaceans and, and other stu stuff that wants to live in here. And then how cool is this log? Again, another destination log. There's no way the plants are ever gonna grow over the log, but you'll still be able to walk out on this thing. And look how he's taking it all the way out into the water. Another sign of a super healthy ecosystem. Look at all these snails doing their part. <laughs> it's just so amazing. So here we are, not just in front of the waterfalls, but on a big giant peninsula. I remember Patrick sending me pictures of these rocks going in, and I know that this is a big dive rock. You could dive down into this, and it's well over 10 feet deep over in here. But how cool is it to be standing here, big giant dive area, and then all these waterfalls, and the sound that you can hear from this space is really incredible. You would never know that that is actually the main bog filter up there. So what's keeping this thing clear is everything just past that waterfall. I'm guessing he's got somewhere between 60 to 80,000 gallons per hour flowing over the top of this. Makes sense with the one, two, three different waterfalls and the sound that's coming off of it. So here we are standing in the main bog filter. Again, this is what's keeping that entire thing. When I say entire thing, 
this is a point of appreciation, right? You can really, really tell how big this thing is from here. Water comes up through this and then look at the huge variety of different plants. Just an awesome experience. And this is only the first leg of our trip. This is day one in Australia. And I came here and was super excited to see this pond because I wanted to be inspired. I'm super inspired. I hope you guys are super inspired. If you like this stuff, hit like, hit subscribe, tell all your friends. We'll keep doing this stuff for you. Till next time. Wee